Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. I talk about motherhood. I talk about pregnancy. I do things a little bit naturally. So if you're into that, please subscribe. Today I want to go over my baby registry gifts that I gotten and things that I asked for. Watch the video with you. I've never done a video like this, but I'm kind of excited about it. Yes, we used that. No, we didn't use that. And just kind of tell you what you really should ask for in your baby registry. Because I remember being like, I don't know what to ask for. I don't have a baby. Like, how am I supposed to, this is so much pressure to figure out what I am going to need when I have no idea. And it's funny, too, because I, like, am pregnant and be like, those are the things that I think are really important. It's like, girl, you have no idea. You don't even know what's about to happen to you in nine weeks. Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> this video is filmed in the upstairs of our new, like, we just redid the upstairs. So we did sheetrock. We did a wood ceiling that you can't see. We just got the carpet in. Just put the bed up. There's not even sheets on this bed exciting. Let's just get started. I would say I'm a minimalist or at least that I'm very intentional with the things that I bring into our house and babies need a bunch of stuff. Okay I'm gonna stop it right in the first five seconds. You no longer get to decide what comes into your house. You'll have Christmas or you'll have Easter and your mom will get them a doll and you're like she has 75 dolls. So then I'll be like we should leave this here so when we come over there's something to play with. Before we start into all this, this video is sponsored by Felix Gray, which is a blue light blocking computer glass. If you use the computer or the phone for your work, I would honestly recommend these. They are having a birthday sale, so they are five years old, and they don't do sales very often. So if you are interested, I would definitely recommend getting on this. The code is CHEERS, and it's good until May 2nd, 2021. At first, I thought that blue light glasses were like a bunch of BS. It's not a bunch of BS. In fact, they have a 30-day trial, so if you buy them and you don't like them, you can return them. So Robelling and Lovelace are the two that I wear. These are the nighttime ones, so they're a little bit more yellow, but it's perfect because then if you're working at night and then you need, you're like, okay, I need to go to bed now. This is gonna help you fall asleep so that that blue light is not getting in your eyes. I'm a huge fan of them. I've used them for, since I was traveling. So pro maybe since they started, four years maybe? I don't know. But I really, I would highly recommend them. Okay, let's get to the video. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. I started this channel traveling full time. This girl has got a lot of energy. I'm 31 weeks right now. I just like to tell stories about the insanity that pregnancy is. Sometimes my boyfriend's dad doesn't watch my videos because he's like, what was that? Hemorrhoids in pregnancy, it's a thing. People need to know this. It is a thing and people do need to know it. Also, welcome to my living room. I usually do these vlogs up in baby's room, but this was our old house, so we've moved into a new house. I had my first baby shower this weekend, literally the weekend before COVID happened. It, like, my, I had another baby shower two weeks later that got canceled because of COVID. And I don't like research and decisions, so like trying to decide what to put on a registry has been so difficult. If you want to see my registry, I will link it below so that you can get some ideas. Instead of linking my registry, I'll link my Amazon registry where I have the things that I actually use. First things first, Amber put on the invitation, please bring a book instead of a card. Genius. For it. Please give a book instead of a card. You can write a little note in the front page of the book, but books are like the same price as cards. And now we have so many books for Aaliyah. It's fantastic. Also, you want to get cardboard books and page books. Like we know this, but I didn't think about this on my registry. The cardboard ones are when they're little and they just want to rip all the pages. I have the page books put away right now and all the cord cardboard ones are out and she just eats them. She's literally just eating cardboard. It's like, bleh, bleh. Cards are expensive these days. So basically a book was like the same price as a card. Love this. It's a baby sign language book. You can see in here that some are cardboard and some are the page books. Honestly, this is to teach me the sign language. Yes, I think that that's a good idea. I think starting with baby sign language is a great idea. We started with it and then just kind of like, it faded away. I don't know why we don't use it. She'd probably be really good at it now. Maybe I'll start that. The only thing that I did was more and all done. And then I'll teach baby. And then they can tell me what they need. I also put a few Dr. Seuss in Spanish books on my registry because I personally love Spanish and I would love to start teaching Spanish to them like super early. I haven't read one Dr. Seuss in Spanish book. I started reading one of the Spanish ones and I was like, I don't know these words. So there's that. The other thing that I put on my registry was Please, 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 if you find any of this stuff secondhand, please get it because I think it's crazy. So many babies get brand new things because they're brand new humans. What happens to all the other stuff? I think people feel weird about that, but I, I 
hope that people do that. I did get some secondhand stuff and I was so grateful for it. I really think that. I think everything's really expensive because they know that other people are gifting it to you. So then they gift it to you. But like we bought the Mamaru and she hated it. We bought it on Marketplace. So we just sold it back on Marketplace and then bought a swing and she loved it. You don't know what your baby wants until your baby's here. The other thing that people feel worried about that I don't think they should, freaking gift cards. Yes, please. I don't know the things that I need. And so to get a gift card is like, it's like a little bit of insurance. These are so cute and I love that they're gender neutral because baby boy can wear this, baby girl can wear this. Almost everything I got was gender neutral because I'm not just thinking about this baby, I'm thinking about potential future babies and then I'll have a lot of clothes for them. Some people love the very pink and blue. More power to you. That's great, it's just a choice. I absolutely love these little hedgehogs. This to me kind of makes it real. Like I hold this and I'm like, Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There's gonna be like a human living in here in, in like nine weeks. <laughs> I also got decor. Love this. This is gonna go on the shelf and it's gonna be perfect. But also, you can actually see through it. Seth and I love taking photos, so I imagine this is gonna be like a fave. I like the camera decor. It'll be good decor and it'll be a good toy eventually. I don't know where it is right now. Do you guys use this? Literally called the snot sucker. Because of COVID, she has been sick one time in her first year of life. Thank God. So I have not had to use the snot sucker yet. She did have a runny nose, but I just didn't feel like I needed to do the snot sucker. I used actually the um, bulb. You squeeze it, shove it up their nose, and, and then open it, and it pulls everything out. She hated it, but I imagine she'd hate the snot sucker too, but... One thing I didn't ask for that I wish I had was a thermometer. Babies can't do the one in their ear until like six months. So make sure that you get one that goes under their tongue, in their armpit, or in their booty. This is Haka, someone told me to get this. This apparently, while baby's feeding on one boob, you squeeze this. I'm just gonna stop it right there. You need the Haka. If you are going to be breastfeeding, you need the Haka. I started it like day one. I had an oversupply and I never used an electric pump. I filled an entire freezer full of milk, which she never drank because she didn't take a bottle, but I never used an electric pump. It was always the Haka. They have like fancy ones now. Get the fancy ones. That's even better. You can suction it to the table so it doesn't knock over. You can have it be attached to this bottle. So unattach the like flange or whatever, reattach a nipple and like it's a bottle. It just gets better and better, but Haka is a must for breastfeeding. This is to sanitize pumping equipment. Yeah. Yep, you need that too. So this is really helpful because you're like, how do I sanitize this? Can I go in the dishwasher? Is the dishwasher soap fine for my baby to have on like the breastfeeding stuff? This thing, you just put a little bit of water in, you throw it in the microwave and it sanitizes everything. Yes. Sometimes I'll put their toys in there, her, I call her chew toys, like the teething rings or nooks. You can use it like 20 times or something, so it's like one a month. There's a bottle sanitizer. So it's just like this thing that sits on the countertop and you put all the bottles in it and you put all the caps in it and it just sanitizes it all. That sounds amazing. People recommended thinking about past just the first year. So that's what this is, Tupperware for baby. It's still in that box. I have not used that at all. And somebody commented on this video and was like, why is there Tupperware for a baby if it's a minimalist video? And I was like, touche. When I feed her, there'll be just a little bit left over of berries or something. I thought about pulling this out the other day, but I just put them in our small Tupperware. So if you don't have tiny Tupperware, maybe grab it. These little spoons, these are great because it'll tell you if it's too hot. Sometimes I've made oatmeal and they turn white and I'm like, okay, we're gonna wait. Or I'll literally just use it to test. But you also want forks. I just had to buy forks recently. The metal ones are easier. She's about a year old, so that's when I started using the forks. Some people do it sooner. The metal ones are nice because it's easier to spear the food that they're trying to get. This big giant spoon. Fill it with baby food and then you squeeze it out and just put it in their mouth. I feel like it'll be so much less mess. I already donated that. That thing seemed silly to me. I asked for it, but it's a huge spoon that you fill puree with and then you squeeze it out and then it goes into their mouth. It could be cool, but I wasn't gonna empty out the contents of the puree into the squeezy of the spoon and then back into the puree if she didn't eat it all. And like a simple spoon seemed much, much better. At first when I saw this, I was like, this is dumb and totally unnecessary, but it's not. I'm really excited about it. If you wanna wash baby in the sink, or even in the tub, you put this down. I want an adult sized version of this. I have not used that yet. It's still in the box. We just use the tub. I never washed her in the sink. If you don't have a tub, like if you just have a shower, that would be awesome to use in your sink. Bottles! <laughs> Seth chose these. 
she never took a bottle. Even now I give her a bottle and she like understands what it's for but she just like chews on it and she's over it. There's something called a bottle box from Baby List and it gives you like one of each different kind of bottle because that's a thing. Babies don't just take any bottle you give them. You have to try a few different ones. Just Google bottle box Baby List and then figure out which bottle your baby likes and then buy a pack of those. Amber said these are great when you're doing dishes or you're doing taking a shower or whatever and baby's big enough. That really was great. I think we put her in a little bit sooner than she should have been. She's kind of like leaning off to the side sometimes. My chiropractor wasn't super stoked on it because she said the stacking of the bones before they like, their muscles can handle that. You probably shouldn't do that. Once she was old enough, she loved it. She would like sit there and spin in it and it was a way to keep her contained a little bit if we had to go do something. And then it turns into a table. So right now it's downstairs in a table. That thing, I, I like. A pack and play. I'm just gonna show a close up of that. It Stop it right there. We set up the pack and play in our bedroom. First of all, it took a lot of patience to put up. Second of all, she never slept in it. She slept with us. So we used it as a changing station. There's a little piece that you can put in for baby. So like one of the pieces was for all the diapers and the wipes and the other side is where we actually changed her. It was nice for that. And then you can take all that stuff out and then it's like a way to keep toddlers contained or like while you're traveling. We have the California Beach Co and I, recommend it all the time. It's, I'm an affiliate with them. I love it. It's huge. So I could get inside and like go in and play with her. You zip it up, keep her in there. It can be shade. If you go to the beach, there's like a tarp that goes over the top that can keep them shaded. Tears down and comes up in like a minute and it's super light and compact where the pack and play does not go up and down easily. And it's super big and bulky. And I just would recommend the California Beach Co. I would recommend the mattress if you're getting the pad if you're gonna use it inside. Hey Shayla gets you 10% off, they're always running sales, but 10% off of the additional sale. Yes. Car seat. I am so grateful for this. That car seat is amazing. It's a little bit heavy. If I did it again, first of all, I have a whole blog on non-toxic car seats. Because the flame retardant that they use on car seats is apparently toxic. There's a few that do wool. They're very expensive, but if you're like conscious of that or you're worried about that, look for a Black Friday sale. We obviously had this one for the infant one and we didn't replace the infant one, but once she went to the convertible seat, we got the wool one. We did Kleck Foomph. The other one that we were looking at was um, the Nuna Rava. This one was pretty heavy. So like the car seat itself was like 10, or the, the yeah, the car seat itself was like 10 pounds. Then you put a 10 pound, 15 pound, 20 pound baby in there and you are really getting a workout. Some of them, again, more expensive are like five pounds. But I did like the way that this clicked into a stroller. We've recently bought a jogging stroller. It would honestly be nice to just have one. So if you can find a lightweight, non-toxic car seat that clicks into a jogging stroller, that would be really nice. You want to have a cup holder for your car for your stroller that is a must i don't know why it's such a big deal but it is i always put stuff in there it's just nice to have it in there i had a big dilemma on wanting the four-way where it went from infant all the way to toddler because i was like okay great you get one thing and it lasts you forever my sister was like one thing to consider is that those are stationary those live in your cars i'm glad that we did the infant seat and then the convertible seat because it was really nice because infants sleep a lot more than like Aaliyah does. So I could just take her and like bring her into Target. She's mobile. I didn't have to take her out of her seat. I could take the whole seat. So if you have the budget for that, I would definitely recommend doing the infant and then the convertible. And the convertible, we had to switch when she was like 10 months old because she was too long. She was 30 inches. But I remember freaking out like, <sighs> the right thing to do. Do I need an infant seat or do I just need the convertible? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I was just like so stressed out about it. Don't stress out about it. Whatever you have, you will adapt to and it will work for you and your family. Don't worry. We also have a baby monitor that somebody gifted us that is coming. It has good range and I think you can hook multiple monitors up. So I love our baby monitor. The temperature of the room is way off. It's always like 80 degrees and I know that her room is for sure not 80 degrees. You can see really well. Like it does a really good job of like pitch black room, you can see your baby. It has the ability to connect to two monitors, so eventually when there's a baby number two, I can have the two monitors on one, two cameras on one monitor. Because she doesn't have a crib, I can like move the camera so that I can see like where she is in the room. A Snuggle Me Organic or Doc a Todd. I was really excited about the Snuggle Me Organic because my nephew loved the Snuggle Me Organic. He was in it 
all the time. Aaliyah hated it. Did not like it. She liked it for tummy time sometimes. She's also a baby that just likes to not be confined. She hated being swaddled. I don't think she liked the like the snuggle me organic. It's not a squeeze, but just like the pressure around her that they say is helpful. She didn't like it. My nephew loved it. My sister's like the go-to for all of the things that I need to know because first of all, she had him two months early. She didn't have a baby shower, so she just got the essentials. Second of all, she lived in a one bedroom apartment. So there was no space for anything other than the essentials. So when I asked her like, hey, do we need this? She's like my favorite resource because she just used what she had. She was just fine, people. The other thing is a carrier. So I tried a few of them. A uh, wild bird <laughs> Could not figure out how to put her in that and feel like she was secure. I love my boppy carrier. It's got a clip that goes around the waist and then the material to like, tighten baby in. She loves it, I love it. Um, someone recently told me that babies should never be facing out in a carrier. It's not good for their hips. That's the way that Aaliyah likes to be in the carrier, so I'm kind of trying to figure that out. I like the idea of carrying her because she gets to see everything that I'm doing. Some people are like, you should put your baby down. Books that I've been reading that like compare different cultures around the world, they carry their babies all the time. And like Americans are just like, we need them to be independent, so put them down. But babies love being with their moms, and I think she learns a ton watching me do things. So I'm trying to find a carrier that works for us. The other thing that I recently got is called a tush baby. I, the company sent it to me and I was like, eh, I'll see, I don't know. Love it, love it. It's like something that goes around your waist and it, they, it's like a seat for them on your hip. So you can just set them on it. It's fantastic. It takes the weight off of my arm. There's a little bit of pressure on my hips, way better. And I can like do things. I can do so much with it. It's, I love it. Okay, back to this. The other thing that I just got gifted was a pregnancy workout guide and a postpartum workout guide. So I will be trying that out. That, it, it, like, if you could put that on your registry, that would be huge. Sorry. The Expecting and Empowered Pregnancy and Postpartum Workouts, incredible. I started in my third trimester because I didn't find them till then. Till then, people ask me, like, what, what would you rather do, the pregnancy or the postpartum? They're totally different, so it's up to you. Pregnancy prepares you for childbirth. Tons of reps of squats, right, as you're getting towards the end to make your legs really strong for birth and they do lots of pelvic work to help relax your pelvic floor and then afterwards it's all about repair it's it's big time i'm so glad i had that you need a way to feed the baby and if you're breastfeeding you want to make sure you've got nipple butter you want to make sure you've got i use bamboo bees pads for leaking the haka is really amazing way to like store the milk right so there's all the breastfeeding stuff and then bottles the bottle box i really think is a good idea a nursing cover that's a good one too. Or you can use a blanket, but the nursing cover was pretty helpful. My favorite was actually by Bamboo Bees. It was like a shawl, so I could like fling it over. It wasn't the thing that I just stick my head through. If you're doing formula, you need the formula, you need the bottles, you need a way to clean the bottles. If you're pumping, you need a way to clean the parts, clothes for the baby. So you can't use blankets and stuff when they're that little. So having like swaddles or sacks that they can sleep in is super helpful. So sleeping and eating and then diapers. We do cloth diapering, so we have that system set up, but make sure that you have enough diapers for baby. For the first like couple weeks, it's all about mom. It's about repair. I've, I have a whole video talking about how to repair after tear. Put that stuff on your registry. I did. Freedom Mom's postpartum box, and I'm so glad that I did. We didn't ask for a high chair, so I wish I had probably asked for a high chair, but just know that some things that you get, like I was super stoked on the Snuggle Me Organic. She didn't like it. I was super stoked on the, the mama root. She didn't like it. Babies do their own thing. And then baby to baby I've heard is different. So like one mom will have a baby and be like, my baby loved the snuggle me. Second baby does not love it. I'll make a blog post about this or just an Amazon store. That might be easier. Either way, that'll be in the description below. I hope this was helpful in making your registry. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys all next time. Mwah. Bye.